networking tech talk with Open Manage and Network Manager. This is for version OMM 6.5. This is Bill Acevedo, and uh, today's topic is uh, the OMM 6.5 end-to-end automation example. So we're gonna we're gonna do a um, a automation rule that shows you from a from an event all the way through the end to an action that configures a box. Um, to give you an, kind of an end-to-end -end example of some of the things you can do with automation. First place we need to start, today is a little bit of a special example. Um, I would recommend that you review the, uh, the basic automation action and actions videos um, that came before this. Um, there is one thing we need to modify for this particular demo, and um, you need to do that in a file called install.properties. And so to get to that file, basically navigate to your install and on windows it's in this path right here it's nowhere apps install lib we want to open up this install properties file and we want to enter this value right here commodore auto red cell inventory dot equipment dot subcomponent dot cache is equal to true and this is going to make available some some default attributes that we need for this particular action now this is going to be set by default in future versions probably in service pack 2 6.5 service pack 2 and later uh, we'll get that in there, but for now we need to set this. Once you set it, save it, file save, and then go to your um, go to your um, web, uh, application server and restart it. So simply right click on the Windows box here and just stop and restart that particular um, item. If it's on Linux, it's a sudo service or stop and start. Okay, so once that's set, uh, we kind of need to work backwards with EPRs. We need to first need to an action uh, that we want to that we want to uh, execute, and so this is our action that we have. And so in this particular case, we're assuming that some some configuration was already invoked from a link up that basically invoked an action to open up an access port. Now this is our automatic port configuration feature, and so um, you can have uh, that configuration already on the box. And so what we want to do now is when somebody unplugs from the port or we get a link down, we want to go and remove access from the port so that somebody can't just plug into it. So it's kind of a security thing. So what does this look like on this link down portion? Let's go look at this. Um, I have one some single attribute that's created in here. Um, it's called entity name, should be from trap. Um, but basically we're gonna be, we're gonna be taking um, an entity identifier of the port that's gonna come in from the link down and we're gonna put it into this attribute and use that in our script. And I'll show you how that's done. Let's first look at the script. And so you see here, um, I have to do some uh, um, some manipulation of that attribute that comes in. This is the entity name from trap that we just looked at. Basically, we're saying we just want to get the first piece of this particular attribute, which is the GI or the interface name, basically, in a format that we can put in the configuration. And so that's what this first part does. Don't get too wrapped up around that. Um, that's just a way to use this particular, this particular attribute. Um, and so what we see here is we see uh, the same thing you would see for embedded CLI, but we're doing print line statements because this is a, a Perl script. You have a little more control with Perl script to do this kind of thing. So we're sending config T, we're sending the interface, and then the, this string attribute is basically this attribute up here where we're taking this particular attribute and we're just, we're just extracting the first part of it. Um, we're going to set a description on the box to say, hey, we're removing configuration. And then we're going to move spanning tree from the box, and then we're going to do a shutdown on it. So the port is offline, and then we're going to exit and exit. So keep that in mind. So we're going to config T, configure an interface, and I'll show you this directly from the command uh, configuration as well. So we have our action created. Now we need to have an event processing rule that works against this action. So I'm going to go and edit this one that I created as an example. And on our filtering, we see we're, we're only filtering on link down. And so this is what we typically get when a port gets unplugged, a link down, if mid link down. And we want to be a little more, um, a little more detailed on what devices we want this to act on. So we have filter conditions. So for example, we don't want any link down coming from any equipment trying to go out and shut that port down. We only want specific equipment. And so in this case, I'm just saying this one device, but you can use the end statement and have multiple devices here. Um, you can just basically based on this here, you can put in and then select multiple devices if you want that to take effect. But even, even beyond that, on a specific piece of equipment, you may not want this to happen for any port or interface for a link down that comes in. You may only have specific interfaces you want this to happen on. The best way to do that is using the if index. 
And so when I'm going to pause here, I'm going to show you how to get the if index for your ports easily so that you can use them in this kind of EPR. So I'm going to just cancel this for now. We'll come back, I'll go back to my resources. And so this is our default resources page. And, and uh, so I can click on my device that I'm interested in. And what you'll notice over here is this if index column. So I can see my if indexes very easily. And the way you do that is by going to the wrench icon and selecting your columns. And one of those just happened to be if index. And so we already, already collect this information as part of our discovery and resync rules. So what this allows you to do now is go through and sort by port and say, oh, I only want specific ports. If it's port, you know, three through six, you might pick the if index. And it just happens to be three, four, five, and six. And that's generally the way it, it works, but not always. So you just gotta make sure the if index is correct. And so you would put that range on here. In my case, I decided I wanna use ports GI 20 uh, through 30. And that includes the one we're going to test today, which is this GI1025. And so you'll see this range of 20 to 30 on my automation rule. So let's go back to that. Go back to my, get my undo there, and then let's get our EPR that we have for demonstration here. And go back in the edit screen and look at it. So you'll see here, here's my FNX between 20 and 30. So we know that it, if we get a link down, it will only take the action we're gonna show here, if it's the, this equipment on these if indexes. And so then we jump to our actions, and what we can see here is we're actually calling the action that we just looked at. And so we can look at that, and um, so you see here, um, when you select it, you can also select it from this um, plus sign up here. There's no targets required because uh, when this comes in, the target is gonna be whatever the, the, um, the event, the link down event is, that's our target. So we don't need to set a target. And so then, then there is, this is a special case where we need to basically pull this thing called entity name. And there's a list of, of internal attributes that you can, you can pass through here. This one just happens to be one called entity name that has our interface name in it. And so we use this syntax here, notification colon entity name. Now this is in the, in the user guide too. There's a, a, a series of other attributes you can use, as I said, but uh, this one is called entity name that we're gonna use. And so what, what it's gonna do is pass this particular attribute onto this action and inside of this attribute, and inside of this action, inside of this attribute that we just saw earlier. Okay, so um, when that happens, it's gonna pass the interface name in and we're gonna pass that to that script that we just looked at and we'll review this after we look at it. So maybe it'll be more clear here. Actually, maybe, let me go review it now just so we, since we're here. So again, this is our action. This is our attribute name and this is how we're passing the attribute from the system and the link, the link down trap onto the action. So, so let's, go, let's go revisit that real quick. This is our action again. Remember our action or attribute is this entity name from trap and it's a string value and our script is using that, that attribute here. And we're using that in this particular area here, but this extra work here again is just to strip out some things we don't need from that attribute. And so we only get the interface name and then we're gonna pass the com commands in and we're gonna use this attribute here as we apply these onto the command line. So interface string, and then the rest is just hard-coded descriptions and that sort of thing. Okay, so let's go see, let's go see it in action. I'm going to refresh here. And so um, what we expect to see here is, so it's uh, my time right now is 1430. So what do we expect to see is a link down come in after this year. Um, but let's just first go to the device. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go actually to put up another screen here. I'm gonna go to resources. So I can jump back to the other screen. And in this box, I'm gonna do a direct access to it. And so the interface we're gonna work on is, uh, I'll show you here, so we're gonna do a show run interface di one slash zero slash 25. So we can see we have this very simple configuration on it, direct description access configured via OMNM, then we got spanning tree port fast. So what we wanna do is remove that, we're gonna change the description, and then we're gonna remove the spanning tree port fast as part of our, our little demo here. So what we need first need to do is go over there and we're gonna we're going to we're gonna fake someone plugging or unplugging. Basically, it's unplugging in this case by sending a um, a shutdown command to this interface. So I'm gonna go interface. K 
Okay, and I'm simply going to do a no shut. I'm going to do a shut. Okay, and then while that's working, we can go back over here to this tab here. And okay, we see that our, our link down already came in. It's uh, 14, 432 right now. So our link down already came in. This is triggering our event processing rule. The event processing rule is going to say, does it fit the filter? Is it a link down, first of all? Does it fit our filter condition for the device that we're expecting it from and the if indexes? If it does, then let's go and run. Um, the action to fix that. And you'll see here we got adaptive CLI run success. So it ran completely at the end and worked. And so we can go back and we can check it out, see what it, see if it worked. I'm going to go exit here. And I'm going to do a show run interface again. GI 1 slash 0 slash 25. And there you go. So before we had this, and it said description access configured via OMNM, span entry port fast. Now what we have is show rank. We did the same thing. Now it shows shutdown and it shows description configuration removed via OMNM. So there is your end to end process showing how the event processing rule can work. Okay, I hope that was a little bit of a, it was a little bit quick. But I hope that was useful in showing you kind of an end-to-end -end process. And so you should be able to uh, do that easily with any event processing rule. It doesn't have to be a Perl. It can be embedded CLI and that sort of thing. And so I hope this was helpful. Thank you.